Hello and welcome to Dot Loop. This video is meant for anyone who has recently been introduced to Dot Loop but may not know where to get started. Or if you're not sure why Dot Loop is a better way to get deals done, then you're in the right spot. Now, before we show you the features of Dot Loop, let's first talk about how we're different than what you might be using today. Most of us have a form software that we log into to create our documents. We fill them out and then we export them and we place e signatures using some sort of e signature tool. And we, of course, all have an email to share documents from client to agent to service provider. And some of you may work with an office or underneath a broker who has a compliance tool, a place where you upload these PDFs when the deal's done. And they use that system to track compliance, to make sure you have all the documents that you need. And that also serves as the office's storage portal. Well, what you're seeing here is a piece together set of systems that creates inefficiencies by moving PDFs from system to system, not to mention multiple logins and passwords. The dot loop difference is that we have all this in one place, the ability to fill out documents, share them with anyone, e-signatures are incorporated, and when they're not, when you must upload a PDF from another agent, you can place the signatures yourself. We have a robust PDF editor with text boxes, signatures, initials, strike through, anything you need to manage the deal regardless of how the other agent is filling out their contracts. We also have an office level and team level compliance piece and of course storage is a part of this for everyone. Let's talk about how to get started. If you don't have an account yet you'll go to dotloop.com and click sign up for free. If you already have an account click sign in. If you forgot your password just enter your password and click the forgot password link. Otherwise to log in, just enter your email, password, and click the sign in button. Once you successfully sign in, you'll be looking at your home page. This is where all of your loops live. A loop is simply the name we give to an online transaction. So you create a new loop by clicking the plus sign whenever you're representing a buyer and making an offer on a new property. You also click the plus sign and create a new loop anytime you have, say, a seller when you're listing their house. If you do rentals, Loops work great for rentals as well. Let's create a loop together and make an offer on someone else's listing. Let's just call this 1200 Fox Run. And if you find a match, you can click that. It will help you populate your documents later down the line. This is the inside of a loop. We have a message center, an activity log. We can set the transaction type the loop status, we're in the pre-offer phase on this purchase. We have a document section that's always going to have an empty folder for you. We have a service provider section. You can add your service providers and at any time you or your client can click on these service providers to request information. If you'd like to do that, that happens in your global people section under the service provider tab. Then there's the people. So that would be you and the other agent and your clients. You can always add anybody here and you can remove them from the drop down on the right. We also have task lists. So if you'd like to create a task list for yourself to remind you what needs to be done next, or if you'd like to create a helpful task list for your clients, this can be done in the task section. As you can already see, Dotloop is more than just a place to fill out documents and get e-signatures. It's a place for you to really start shaping your buyer's and seller's experience. It helps you guide your client through that buying and selling process with service providers, with next steps on tasks. But let's circle back to documents. If I want to add documents to this folder, I would just click the Add Document button and I can bring in PDFs from my computer or from my email or I can choose from my interactive templates library. So if your local association, board, or MLS is partnered with Dotloop, you can attach yourself to that association and have interactive documents available. The way you would do that, let's deviate from this loop for just a second, you would go up to your My Account section, head left to the Profiles section, and then just scroll down a little bit to the Brokerage and Association section, click Add Association, search for your association, select it, click Add, and then enter your invitation code or you may be asked for a nerds ID. Once you've done that, your global template section will have a folder of documents waiting for you. 
just as a side tip, if you'd like to create your own folders, so short sale packets or listing or buying packets or rental packets, you can do that by clicking the new folder button and then adding copies of these documents into your own packets. I've done that over here on the left. So when we head back to our loop, smiley face will take us back to the home page and then we'll just reopen our Fox Run. When we head back to the loop and now click Add From Templates, we're so I'm going to select the packet that I've previously built. So Add From Templates, and I'll choose my buying packet. So I'll click on that, select all, copy. These are templates. They autofill information. The text boxes and e-signatures are pre-added so that when I open up my purchase contract, you can open one at a time or you can select a group of documents and open these up for editing. These templates will present an autofill window. The autofill window saves time because you can tell the loop who's who. You can enter information such as financial, property information, offer dates, listing information, and this will help you pre-fill your documents. So just to speed things up here a little bit, I'm going to add a client, but I'm not going to fill this entire thing out for this video. Let's add Ryan Smith. He's my buyer. Add person. Now Ryan's name will populate through the buyer text fields, and the signature fields that are pre-placed for the buyer role will allow Ryan to sign there. We have property address, and let's go ahead and throw in a purchase price, let's say 500000 earnest money 5000 and we'll just leave it at that. You would, of course, fill out the rest of the fields. Click autofill, and the document would prefill, or the documents, if you've opened multiple, will prefill with that information. From here, you would just click in the remaining text boxes and fill them out. You can tab through the document, and then you would save your progress as you go, and save and share when you're ready. Let's click the Save and Share button to show you what it would look like to choose Ryan Smith, give him the sign privilege over here, can sign, that is the appropriate privilege for Ryan to sign a document. We can type a custom message and then this button here would send Ryan an email allowing him to sign these documents online. I'm not going to click that just yet. Let's close this window down, save, and back out of these documents. I want to show you the second type of document. So by clicking add, I can also bring in PDFs from my computer or my email. In this case, I'm just going to grab a set of disclosures that a listing agent sent me. So here we have a scanned listing packet from the listing agent on Fox Run. As we're all aware, some documents at some times get scanned, side, get scanned sideways or upside down. Dotloop has great day-to-day -day tools for you to manage this, these situations. So I can rotate a document, one page or the entire file, left or right. And I could also split this into its individual pieces. So if we had a lead-based paint, which was the first page, and a residential property disclosure, which was the remaining, I can quickly split these documents into their separate pieces and then continue editing. So at the top, we have our add, signature, initial, text, date, name, checkbox, radio button, and strike through. In this case, I just need a couple initials and a signature and a checkbox here. So resizing all of these fields and repositioning all of these fields is the same. I'll just give you an example of the initials. We will click to place the initial, resize from the bottom right, assign this to our client, and do the same thing for the initial just below that. Resize by dragging it up, assign this field to Ryan, and then we can add a checkbox, and we can add a signature, to the bottom here. Just click, resize, assign to Ryan. And all these signatures and initials will be dated. So this will be dated on the right hand side of the signature box. These will be dated just below the initials. And that is the basics of editing PDFs. This is one of Dotloop users' favorite tools because it allows you to modify documents regardless of what the other agent is using to complete their end of the deal. So we'll save this. We will back out of this set of documents, and now I want to show you how we can share them all at once. So let's click on the lead-based paint, 
and just the real estate purchase contract. Obviously, we could select everything and share it at once if all documents needed to be signed, but we're just going to do these two. Click the share button, and this is the screen that you just saw a minute ago that allows us to choose Ryan, give him the sign privilege, type a custom message if we want, and click share. Just a quick note on the other privileges here. If we gave Ryan view only, he would not be able to sign. He would just be able to look at the document. Can sign allows him to sign. Can fill and sign would actually allow him to modify the text fields and check boxes. So you would really only use this with like a seller's disclosure if you're representing the seller. And then edit in private is what we would share to the other agent on the other side of the transaction. That allows that other agent to modify the document as needed and use the remaining e-signatures. For now, let's just leave it with can sign and click share. And now we're ready to show you the client e-signing experience. To do that, I'm just going to switch over to our client's email. So now I'm acting as Ryan. Okay, Ryan, myself, could be anywhere in the world right now. As long as I have internet access, I could be on my phone, tablet, home, or work computer. And we see an email that says Hunter needs you to sign two documents. So again, the client will receive this email from you. They'll click on the View Documents link and they'll be taken directly to the set of documents with a start signing button in the upper right hand corner. So to start signing we can click on this button or we can use the scroll bar on the right to actually scroll through and then look for the highlighted fields. Either way we will enter an automated process to make sure we hit all the signatures. So we just have to click to sign. The first field we click in will be asked to confirm our e-sign name and initials. So we can add a middle initial uh, we can draw our signature if we want by clicking draw and eventually we'll adopt what we want our signature and initials to be for the rest of the fields that we click in for this set of documents. And now all we have to do is click to sign. Those are date and time stamped. And so I'll continue just to sign the rest of these documents to show how easy it is here. The page is continuously scrolling for me. At any point in time I can scroll up or down and if I miss a field in scrolling up or down, at the end of this process, I'll be taken back to those fields. So it's going to, once we get down here and finish this lead based paint, we'll be taken back up to the signature fields that we missed. You can see it just went back up the page there. And when we're done, we'll get a yellow bar across the top that says, you're almost done, click finish. And then we're done. We click finish. You receive an email as the agent that says your documents have been signed. Now, if you've added service providers to your account, your client will see a pop-up window that says, hey, here's your next steps. Would you like to request information from these service providers? If you don't add service providers, your clients won't see this step. They'll simply be given the opportunity to create a free .loop account so that they can log in and always have access to these documents. If we go back to the agent side here and just refresh the page, so now we're looking at the agent's account again, we're going to see that these two documents are signed. We can click and drag these up or down to organize our loop however we see fit. If we ever want to export these documents, we can quickly checkbox them and click print or download. But the next step here would be to present this offer to the listing agent. So I'll click share. Uh, I will add Karen, who's the listing agent, and I'll give her the edit and private privilege. Okay, we'll click share, and Karen will get an email similar to the one the client got that will allow her to click on the link, view the documents, and in this case, you um, assign the rest of the signature fields to her client and completely negotiate online using Dotloop's interactive document templates. Okay, so we'll just click done here. And that is a high level overview of sharing and e-signing. I'd like to point out a few other things here. For example, the task list. So if I wanted to create a task list for my client, let's say that we're under contract now, fast forwarding a bit. And I want to create a client move plan. Okay, just to help my client think about the next steps here, what they need to do to get ready for the move. Well, they need to change utilities and maybe hire a moving company. I got a typo in there. 
we can just rename on the right, remember? Okay, and maybe they need to schedule to be off work on move day. Whatever tasks you think are helpful to guide your client through this process, you can create a task list and then share it quickly with Ryan with a helpful message. Share. Now he receives an email with a link to view that task list in his loop. Now, let's say you have had your client sign these documents and you go to lunch, you don't take your computer, you get an email from your client saying, you know what, actually can we take that offer down? Can we lower the price? These things are very easy to do on the go with DotLoop's mobile app for Android or Apple. I'm going to actually transition over real quick and give you a glimpse of our Apple app. I'll just log in here by clicking on the dot loop smiley face. And what you can see is that at the top here we have Fox Run. So all of these deals that you're, that you're creating, even if you're just uploading PDFs for storage, you still have all your loops in your pocket. You have your entire filing cabinet with you wherever you go. So if a client calls and says, I need a copy of the contract from Fox Run and it's six months down the line, you can quickly find that purchase contract, select it, and, and reshare it with anybody in that loop. I like to point out a, a fun feature, which is our scan feature. So some of you may have, have been in this situation before where you're showing a house, but the disclosures weren't on the MLS yet. You want to make that offer quick, and you get there, and there's a copy of the disclosure sitting on the counter. But you can't take that copy because it was left there to stay with the house for other showings. So this feature, this scan feature, is an example of when this would come in handy. I'm doing a walkthrough with a, a client. I click the scan a document feature. It pulls up my camera. I've got the lead-based paint here. I'm going to snap a picture of that as well as the residential property disclosures. I would continue taking pictures of those documents. And maybe there's something else on the table that you want a copy of. Maybe there's a list of sellers' home improvements. Hey, okay, just take a picture of those. Click the little checkbox down here. And then we will crop it. Actually, it auto-crops for you, but you can change that here at the bottom. You can change the brightness at the bottom as well. And then just click Done if you're happy with your pictures. Give it a name. Let's call this lead-based paint. And we'll click Done in the upper right-hand corner. Now that will convert that image into a PDF that is now in your loop. So if we click on that to open it, we can also modify documents. So here I'll click the plus sign. I'll add a signature. Just click to place it here on the bottom. And then you just click and drag with your finger to reposition it. And then you can assign that to Ryan. And we'll just go ahead and save that at the bottom. Now, if Ryan is with you in person, you could always share it, or you could do a host in-person signing. So I'll go up here to the right, click host in-person signing, choose Ryan, click submit, and then I'll hand my phone over to Ryan. He can click begin signing, which will take him to a browser on my phone or tablet. He clicks start, clicks in the field, adopts and signs his signature, clicks finish, and we've captured a signature in person using our phone. So now we just close this down, reopen the app, and you and your agent account have assigned lead-based paint. Now going back to the scenario that I mentioned when I opened the app the first time was that your client wants to make a change to that contract. All we have to do is open up the contract. Okay, we can zoom in or out. Find that purchase price, click in the field, click edit, and we can make those changes and reshare. Okay, so I'm just going to make this change. Let's say we drop this to 490. Okay, and then we have the save and share button at the bottom. Just choose Ryan, share, or if he's with you, you could of course do the host in person signing just as we showed you. That's a quick overview of some of the extra features that are available on the app. Let's go back to our desktop here where we have our loop pulled up and show you just a few more things. The smiley face takes us back to our home page. 
we have a global task section. We have a global people section where you can add your service providers. We have our global template section where all the templates are housed. And then again, you have your My Account section. This is where you would sign out. And just below the global navigation bar, we have some filters. So you can decide whether you're viewing your loops that are active under contract or private, and you can hide loops that are sold, leased, or archived. If you have any questions about anything that was discussed in this video, or you would like a little bit more content, you can always call 888.loop. We're here seven days a week or visit our support site, support.loop.com. We have a dynamic search bar here that you can type in keywords to find content-specific videos and articles, or you can visit the client, agent, broker, or team section, as well as mobile and service providers. And we also have the training section here, which is great for recorded videos, um, webinar signups, or if you're interested in on-site training, check out our on-site training section as well. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Have a great day and happy looping.